Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. Sorry I had to take a break last week, mostly because I was too busy running some errands for the family, you know, my family. Not to mention I had a doctor's appointment that I had to attend to. Yeah, and also I've been working out a lot. You know, just keeping up, you know, taking some vitamins, trying to feel good for myself. And plus I needed a long break because I was very tired. I just never had time to take a break to do a video, so that's always the case. And the last movie review I just did was Arachnophobia, which I just recently bought from Disney Movie Rewards on Blu-ray, which I had to double up my points in order for, for me to get the Blu-ray. Yeah, 1,200 points that I had to go for. But I didn't have to pay a dime to do so, <laughs> so I'm happy for that. I mean, it had a solid transfer. It looks even better than ever on Blu-ray. Better than all the previous releases. But the extras alone, however, was a disappointment. So they could have been more than that. But what can you do? Considering that it was a modest hit at the time. Well, anyway, I'm going to review another movie. And it's a recent movie that just came out surprisingly this year in January. But it came out overseas uh, last year. And it's a movie that's, as we all know, that's based on the book by the late original creator, Michael Bond, who just passed away uh, on the same day as the production ended for the sequel. And that is Paddington 2. Yep, and this is a sequel to the original Paddington from 2014, which came out in 2015 in North America. Which was actually released by the Weinstein Company, yeah, the, the production company that's owned by the Weinstein brothers, Harvey and Bob. And since uh, we all know about what happened recently with his sexual abuse allegations that's going on, Warner Brothers decided to release this film this time for the sequel. And they're going to continue to release it again when they get to the third sequel that's going to follow. And yes, they really are. Um, and they team up with Studio Canal, which happens to release the film in the UK and around the world, you know, worldwide. So they help in hand produce the film with... Um, David Heyman's uh, production company, Heyday Films. You know, the same company that produced all the Harry Potter movies. Makes sense. And it's true because uh, Paddington is uh, a family film. It's a family-friendly film for everybody. And it's great to see that this sequel finally got a 100% approval rating on Rotten Tomatoes, which is very rare for a film like this, being the best rated film ever. Because we know that the previous release of the film was highly rated uh, by Rotten Tomatoes as well. But it wasn't uh, 100% sadly. But that's okay. It still was the highest rated film ever for its time. In fact, um, as far as this movie is concerned, it's actually one of the better sequels that followed and I'm happy to see that we now got a better sequel to the first movie and mostly because not only do we got the original cast back you know, including the including Ben Whitshaw doing the voice of Paddington the young bear cub who who has uh, a lovable red hat and a blue coat and and he also uh, hides his uh, Marmalade sandwich underneath it because he loves Marmalade. Yeah, that's his favorite. Mostly because his family that adopt him, yeah, which is uh, Aunt Lucy and and his uncle uh, Patuso, and they've been taking care of him ever since until he finally got a home of its own somewhere in London all the way to Windsor Gardens where we get to meet the Browns. Yeah, the Browns family. So that's cute. But this one, however, is even better. So let's get to the review. 
It stars Ben Winshaw as Paddington Brown, uh, Hugh Bonneville, Sally Hawkins, which we just last saw her in The Shape of Water, but she was, of course, in the first uh, Paddington, as we all know. Hugh Grant, he's been known for films like Four Reddings and a Funeral, Nine Months, and several others that he has. But he's been in some earlier stuff, too. Uh, Brandon Gleeson, he's been in a lot of work, too. I mean, he's, he's also in some of the Harry Potter sequels, keep that in mind. But he was also in the movies like In Bruges, and he also was in the movie The Secret of Kells. He did the voice acting for that as the father. Uh, voice acting for that, and any other. He's a great actor. Uh, Madeline Harris, Samuel Jocelyn. Julie Walters, yep, also been in some Harry Potter sequels, but been in other stuff too, like Buster, yeah, with uh, Phil Collins and many others. Jim Broadbent from The Bowers from 1997. Yeah, I still, net, still have yet to find that movie because I do have it. Maybe do a review someday since it just celebrated... Uh, Already celebrates uh, 20th anniversary for that film. And he's been in many others too. Peter Capaldi. Simon Farsnaby. Uh, Amelda Stalston. Uh, Michael Gammon. Joanne Lumley. Uh, Nora Taylor. Arlene Atkins. And Tom Conti. Yes, Tom Conti has been in films like Saving Grace from 1985 um, and some other films that he's been in in his career. Yeah, it's great to see him. Yeah, it's written by Paul Kane along with Simon Farnaby. That's based on the book by Michael Bond, yeah, Pan to Bear, and it's directed by, once again, Paul Kane. The movie begins where we last meet Paddington Bear, who now lives with the Browns family in Windsor Gardens, and that soon became very popular in the entire community. Everyone loved him except for the officer. And Henry Brown, however, got used to him, even though at first he didn't like him, but he got into it after all this time. So, But hey, you know how it is. <laughs> so... It's great to see that Panton now has a home to live in, to look by and see what, no matter what happens, he will always be remembered. That is until he began to find out that it's Aunt Lucy's 100th birthday that's upcoming and running. So Panton was actually thinking about giving her a birthday gift. Since it's a long way from where she lives, because she lived ever since um, he got adopted by Aunt Lucy along with his uncle. So anyway, his plan was to go to an antique shop that Samuel Goober owns to find a gift for her. And he actually found a pop-up book of the City of London. That this will definitely be the the perfect gift for Aunt Lucy. But unfortunately, it's very expensive. So in order way to actually get that book was to actually work on every single job that he needs to, to choose. But unfortunately, it wasn't easy for him, such as working as a barber, which he accidentally wrecked havoc. I mean, especially when he was trying to get a, a haircut to to the judge, who's played by Tom Conti, by the way, yeah, <laughs> Judge Gerald uh, Biggleswad. <laughs> uh, it was a very funny scene too, where <laughs> yeah, he was trying to give um, the judge a haircut, but then he accidentally, uh, after he had trouble trying to uh, turn on the 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 buzzer. And he started. He accidentally started wrecking havoc 
at the barber shop and then he wants up and then the buzzer suddenly went straight into to the back of his head so now he's almost almost uh, prematurely bald there so Panton had to fix uh, his bald spot by putting some marmalade inside just to cover it up and yeah that didn't seem to work out very well so he got fired so now he works again only this time as a window washer so hoping he'll get paid more so it was doing okay for him but he wasn't getting enough money to to cover up for the book so he was hoping maybe there might be a, an interesting plan here so later at night uh, the Browns family along with Paddington just went to a county fair and that's when they meet the actor Phoenix uh, Buckingham who's played by Hugh Grant which he's basically what he is an actor who's a bit neuristic I mean he basically only works by himself I mean that's why he had a lot of costumes inside his basement but he does live right next to the Browns. Anyway, he, he basically just focused on, on doing all these dog food commercials and because he hardly ever does any acting. So that that's why. But anyway, just when he was continued to, to finish working on washing all the windows because he was done with the job, he suddenly uh, spotted a thief that just went inside Samuel Gruber's antique shop and actually stole the pop-up book and that's when Paddington was just ready to chase down the thief until the cop suddenly arrived and and was ready to arrest Paddington for the book even though he was wrongfully accused uh, the thief actually disappeared out of thin air and he was now being sentenced to 10 years in prison. Yeah, such a shame. Well, during the first day in prison, Paddington was just having trouble. He was already uh, being assigned to to actually wash the laundry, you know, washing all these prisoners' clothes. But then he accidentally put his red hat inside the the laundry. And, <laughs> and apparently all the prisoners' clothes had had turned pink, because usually uh, white and and black stripes, but it's now pink and and uh, black stripes. <laughs> they were having some breakfast, but they were mostly eating the same breakfast that they've been serving him ever since. So, so then the prisoners decided to offer Paddington to go after the chef named simply Knuckles who was played by Brennan Gleason so he wanted Paddington to go ask him to see if maybe they can find something else for him to, to do to actually make something better than than the same stuff that they've been eating all this time that's when Paddington Farmer planned for for Knuckles to actually make something better such as using Mamelod, and hoping that the prisoners will love it. So they had to bring some a bag of oranges, um, tons of sugar, along with cinnamon, just to make it just right. Yeah. The very next morning, the prisoners uh, got up. Uh, they tried the marmalade that Knuckles and Paddington made. And guess what? They loved it. They really did. They loved it so much that they wanted more. <laughs> and they were hoping that maybe someday they might be able to make some more. And then after they started making all the marmalade with all the recipes of, of every cake that they made and every other, that suddenly the entire prison had became a lively place. So now Things were going good for the better for Paddington. Meanwhile, the Browns family is trying to find out about the thief who's very suspicious and they're trying to discover all the clues that might lead to someone who's actually 
the one person who might be responsible for for taking the book. And this is actually one of the biggest surprises to actually find out because because every single picture that they draw all look the same. So they begin to see some connections that it turns out that after all this time that the thief who's dressed up in all these disguises is actually the actor Phoenix Buckingham. Yeah, and the main reason why he stole the pop-up book from the antique shop is not only that he actually listens to Paddington while they went to the fair, was because his plan was he wanted to be able to write down all the letters, which there are clues, that would actually lead to the train, and this is the climax, where, where it actually has all the jewels hidden inside. So those are the letters where he had to press all these letters in order for the jewels to finally arrive. And yeah, hard to believe. So the Browns was trying to do their best to clear Penitent's name and hopefully be able to stop the thief from stealing the book. That that also leads to the climax where you know Penitent's who has already escaped from prison from Knuckles and the rest of the prisoners gang because they were actually planning on escaping they at least Paddington came back and just to stop them along with the Browns family going all the way to the train to, to go after Phoenix so that was the case in the film well, anyway, it it's a great movie. In fact, it was a lot better than I thought, and, and I really enjoyed it. Uh, I gotta say, the the cast did a great job, including Ben with Shaw as the voice of Penitent. I love all the funny moments that actually happen. Yeah, such as the the barbershop scene, or even the some other funny scenes with the the prisoners clothes and and then of course <laughs> knuckles you know because he's always at first he was mean but then in the end he just wants to escape he, you know he wanted to live his own life he wants to be able to become a new home for him to actually uh, go all the way to his land to to collect some more marmalade so that way they can make some more recipes. So it'd be cool. And, and it was very sad at the end, and I'm gonna mention the ending too, where where Aunt Lucy had finally came because it was getting ready for Aunt Lucy's birthday. So that was exactly the present that they have to go for because now the pop-up book was only being used for evidence. Uh, it did make me cry when Aunt Lucy finally came and hugging the Paddington because now you know she's finally here. Yeah, because after all, uh, Paddington just got woken up from a coma. Yeah, you know, during the end of the film, it was a really loving, touching moment right there. And, it really ended perfectly right there. But can't wait to see what happens next. Hugh Grant did a great job uh, playing the, the villain, though. Yeah, Phoenix uh, Buckingham. I mean, the fact that yeah he plays uh, an actor who's who's just loves to be him, who just loves to be all alone, you know, playing all these parts. And he's always pretending that once he was inside the basement, he sees all these costumes around, you know, pretending like he's all these other guys. So it's almost like, you know, <laughs> and he's just talking to himself and he's just going around acting like, like he's talking to him. That sort of way. And he's just going up with all these disguises that he's doing, you know, going around finding some clues in order to, to find what he's looking for. Here and there. 
Uh, it was also great to see um, all the actors back again, like Hugh Bonnebound, uh, Hugh Bonneville, Sally Hawkins, uh, Madeline Harris, and Samuel Jocelyn, and of course Julie Rock, uh, Julie Walters, yeah. yeah, and all the rest of the actors too joining in. So it's really great. And I'm glad the Browns had came to the rescue to save Pennington trying to clear his name and everything that they can because we know that he was in danger to actually find out who the thief was as I already mentioned already it was Phoenix and no matter what they do no matter how many trouble that Pennington has gotten himself into all we know now is that he's still family He's very cute, very lovable, and he'll always be remembered from time to time. And that's what matters the most here. And I'm happy. Has a great score that's done by Dario uh, Maria Nelly. And it was just beautiful. It really is. One of the best sequels I've seen so far this year. And I'm just glad I saw it. So, it's on Blu-ray already. Uh, I'll pick it up someday. I still haven't picked up the first movie on Blu-ray, and I hope I do. It's, as long as the prices go down, so there's always going to be a case. But yeah, I'm sorry I had to give away a little bit of the surprise, but that's okay. I just, I just love this movie, and I think it's worth talking about it. I'm glad Michael Bond did a great job creating this character because you know, Paddington is just such a cute, lovable bear that you just want to hug him. Yeah, because he did the best he could. I mean, he's he's a really nice bear. He's trying to do the best for the community and, and help out. So he's always going to be remembered. And that's all I can say. So anyway, that's Paddington 2, and I give the film five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.